Hi, you've clicked on today's Tropical Tibet for Tuesday, August 25th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, here's the Atlantic, and we have a lot to talk about regarding newly named Tropical Storm Erica yesterday, formed from the robust tropical wave that we've been tracking across the Atlantic. And uh, you can see it's really caught up with ex Danny here. Here's the remnants of Danny bringing some rains to Puerto Rico, but probably not enough. Erica may bring more as it is following in Danny's footsteps and will be very close to Puerto Rico in a couple of days, moving faster and also larger. You can see a broader circulation than what Danny had. And we talked about these larger waves, these larger storms. Um, a little more robust in terms of being able to survive the trade wind acceleration, the wind shear, and the drier air that's usually present near the Lesser Antilles during El Nino years like this year. And Erica has a better chance of not dissipating as Danny did. And you can see Danny, you know, still a nice little wave axis coming through the island. So if Danny didn't fully evaporate coming into Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, then Erica, with its larger size, is uh, fairly likely to maintain at least tropical storm strength as it moves through this region and we may be dealing with a closed circulation uh, and thunderstorms for this area but it's not uh, going to have an easy time strengthening on approach to the islands there are some struggles for Erica here's the recon planes currently taking data from the system two of them flying simultaneously as of this recording here's the lower plane flying at about 5,000 feet it's had two center fixes so far the first one here the second one here so it's moving toward the west northwest here's the second plane flying a little bit higher up at about 10,000 feet so twice the altitude of the other plane. Here's its center fix. Now these images aren't exactly scaled one to one, but if you look at the satellite background you can tell that the lower level center is right about here, whereas the 10,000 foot center is right here. So they are not in the same place. And uh, this indicates that Erica's vortex is tilting with height. And this is bad for tropical storms because they are warm core and you want all of the warm air near the center to be stacked vertically up and down like this and this is this gives you the lowest pressure at the surface when you have all the warm air in a nice vertical column if the column is tilted like this you know usually it's in one direction sometimes it can change directions more than once then the low pressure at the surface is usually weaker because you don't have all that warm air stacked in one vertical column and it's very hard to get organized thunderstorm activity when the vortex is disjointed in this way and uh, right now the models are starting to pick up on this decoupling of Erica's cir circulation. This is the H wharf which did not show this before but now this morning's run initializing the surface low here and uh, the color field is mid-level relative humidity. The wind barbs are the mid-level wind and not the surface wind so when you look at the circulation from the barbs you see it's to the south of the surface circulation so the H wharf picking up on this decoupling uh, toward the south with height and as we go out in time, this is the H war forecast for Thursday evening. You see the surface center near the coast of Puerto Rico, but look at this. All the moist convection and the circulation in the mid-levels is way off to the east here. So there's a big time tilt toward the east, and this uh, really has become very decoupled on the H wharf through 60 hours. Now the H wharf does eventually develop Erica into a hurricane over here, and that's because in order to overcome this kind of disjointed structure, you really need a large amount of convection to go up and kind of force the circulation to realign around that heat source that that convection represents. If you get a lot of thunderstorms, sometimes the storm can fix itself. But we've talked about, as with Danny, this area right here not particularly favorable. Now, Erica may survive in here, unlike Danny, but it's probably not going to have a great time developing deep thunderstorms. You can see the stuff it has today is not really that widespread. It's only moderate convection. But if we look at the water temperatures, it gets a lot warmer out here toward the Bahamas in the southwest Atlantic. And as Erica comes out of the cooler water and into even hotter water, uh, things become more unstable and convection may be easier to come by for the storm and so it may be able to reorient itself in this area and this is where a lot of models start to show Erica intensifying in a couple of days and this is what the National Hurricane Center has in their forecast a west-northwest track uh, through the Lesser Antilles here and then eventually strengthening to hurricane strength in the Bahamas by day five. Now there's a lot of uncertainty in this forecast because of uh, the current structure of Erica. The models have been all over the place with the system so far. This was, for example, the European run from last night, uh, which showed a major hurricane off of the southeast U.S. coast in 10 days, slowly developing from Erica. Here's this morning's run at the same time. There's nothing there. 
uh, what would be left of Erica is a very weak trough that made it into the eastern Gulf of Mexico because it was so weak that it just never turned to the north and instead made it into the Gulf because it's weak. But you can see the stark, stark difference between model runs and the European is one of our most trusted models and uh, we're not seeing consistency. And we talked about this with Danny when it's not consistent uh, that doesn't lend confidence to the forecast. And a lot of models have been this way with the system so far. And uh, some develop it, some do not. Right now, the Hurricane Center calling for gradual but slow strengthening as it makes it into the Bahamas. There are currently tropical storm watches out from Dominica to Anguilla here, and those will likely become warnings soon, and then watches will probably be needed for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as well. Um, hopefully beneficial rain again from Erica. This is not expected to intensify a lot, so not a big wind problem for the islands. But like Danny, hopefully some uh, beneficial drought-relieving rains coming from the system. Now here are the model tracks in agreement with the general idea from the NHC, this very tightly clustered envelope of track possibilities into the Bahamas. And uh, it becomes much more interesting once we get beyond day four and five here because the steering currents become rather weak. Here's the European ensemble forecast for day four. This is Saturday. Here's where Erica would be on the model in the southeastern Bahamas. This is at 500 millibar heights and anomalies, anomalies in color. You can see this black contour outlines a subtropical ridge that has Erica to the south of it. This is what's steering Erica westward. And the edge of this ridge is right over Florida. You can see the break, the weakness in the Gulf of Mexico. Now in this kind of steering pattern, there are a few possibilities. You see a short wave coming into the Midwest toward the Southeast. Now, some models might have this erode the Northwestern part of the ridge. And if Erica is developing into a hurricane at this point, it may be able to just turn north around the western periphery of the ridge and then gradually recurve out to sea. This is what a lot of models had a couple of days ago. The other possibility is that uh, the short wave is not as strong as pronounced as not as shown on some of the models. The short wave may not exist at all. You may have this ridge just build over the top and form a giant ridge that kind of connects with the Atlantic Ridge. And then whether or not Erica is a hurricane, we could have it directed somewhere into the United States coastline in the longer range. The third possibility is that regardless of the short wave, whether it's there or not, Erica just remains weak, fails to develop into a hurricane at all, and remains a shallow wave, depression, or storm that gradually makes it all the way into the Gulf of Mexico with the low level steering flow and does not round the ridge until it's made it uh, past Cuba and Florida. All three of these options are realistically still on the table. And the reason for that is because there's no giant trough in the east to guarantee that this will move out to sea. Here's out to day eight on the European Ensemble. You see the ridge just continues to build, the height anomalies to the north. And we've talked about this many times over the years. You have to watch underneath for trouble in the tropics when there's a ridge over New England. And we currently have that with Erica moving into this area. And this is going to be an area of very weak steering currents. Um, near the Greater Antilles, Florida, the Bahamas. Again, you know, the trough is still here for this potentially recurve as a strong system, but with the ridge right here, uh, there are all sorts of track possibilities that could have this influencing land, including the United States in the longer range. But we are talking about five plus days, and even by day 10, by next week, we may still be talking about this system so there's a lot to think about uh, during the next several days and uh, not an, Im an imminent threat for the Bahamas and the U.S., but it's likely to be in this general area at some kind of intensity. Uh, what that is, hard to say, but it's likely to struggle over the next few days. Potential to re-strengthen in a more favorable environment later, but that may be days away yet. So lots of time to watch this system. Currently only an imminent threat to the islands, but probably more of a benefit with rain than anything else. So we'll continue to watch Erica very closely over the coming days. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center to stay on top of the latest information. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.